We looked at the 200 largest metropolitan economies around the world, which constitute about one-seventh of the world's population, but actually almost half of its GDP. When you look region by region, you see that these metropolitan areas are really the places that, that drive growth. For instance, we looked at uh, 64 metropolitan areas in North America and U.S. and Canada, which are about 62% of the combined economies of those countries, uh, but accounted for 83% of the combined GDP growth of those countries uh, over the last year. Uh, similar thing in the Middle East and Africa, uh, 12 metropolitan areas, about 37% of the jobs base of those countries, but 56% of the job growth. Uh, so the first message that really comes through is that uh, it's an uneven recovery, a difficult year, but it's really metropolitan areas that continue uh, to drive growth worldwide. I think in light of the growth uh, that we're continuing to see in metropolitan areas in the, the developing or the, the growth world, places like China, India, uh, Brazil, uh, Argentina, uh, you know, I think this is often viewed as a threat by leaders in the more developed places in the United States, uh, in Europe. But I think at the metro level, leaders need to see this as an opportunity. Too often we've just thought about uh, you know, China, uh, Southeast Asia, these are places to export production to. But as they grow and grow wealthier, I think we need to diversify how we think about those as economies. Uh, think about these cities as places not just for uh, production, but also for new trade and exporting relationships to their consumers and their businesses. Uh, think about them potentially as sources of investment, as their consumers, as their governments, uh, as their businesses uh, you know, grow. Uh, think about you know, thinking about us as a place where they might want to locate uh, high value economic activities. So I think diversifying our economic development stance, getting intentional about what your place does, what your firms do uh, that might have demand in those places, and then forging these relationships between cities. In the end, the, the global economy is just a network of trading cities. So being more intentional about forging those relationships. Uh, and then you know, thinking about you know, where you're going to grow, how you're going to grow, it's, it's going to have to come from outside the United States. We've got a government with a lot of debt. We have consumers with a lot of debt. I think the more that we're outwardly focused, the more that our metropolitan areas become globally fluent, the better position they're going to be uh, for growth. It's, it's not just a one-year thing. This is going to be a several decades thing. And I think if we're intentional about uh, positioning ourselves to capture that, we will be much better off as a nation in the end. Uh, there is an uneven recovery, though, and you see that reflected in the metropolitan areas that ranked highest and lowest on our performance index. 95% of the highest performing metropolitan areas on GDP per capita growth and employment growth uh, were in developing regions like developing Asia Pacific, uh, Latin America, Middle East and Africa, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, places like Shanghai, uh, Santiago, Mumbai, uh, three metropolitan areas in Turkey, uh, really continuing to grow fast amid this, this uneven recovery. You look at the bottom of the list, not a lot of surprises there. Uh, places in the Eurozone, the peripheral countries like Athens, uh, Dublin, Lisbon, uh, Sevilla, but also places in North America like Sacramento, uh, Kansas City really struggling over the past year and actually still losing either jobs or income or both.